we want to see how to use the discounted cash flow analysis me method to determine the enterprise value of a company. In this case, the company is Dollar General, and we're looking at a research report from Morgan Stanley from June of 2014. And they provided us with this analysis. They did it doing several things uh, in, in four steps. One is they determined or estimated the cash flows uh, for the first six years and then uh, provided a growth rate of 2.5%, which was sort of their prediction for cash flow beyond the uh, six year period. Secondly, they determined the weighted average cost of capital, which we won't focus on. It's not a big focus of this discussion, um, but we will use that, of course. Third, they did the math to determine the enterprise value today, the total value of the enterprise today. Um, then they subtracted the debt and simply did the uh, math of taking the remaining equity value divided by the total number of shares outstanding to get a per share price of fair value uh, given their assumptions and using the discounted cash flow method. So let's go through what they've, what they've done. First they've come up with a forecast income statement for six years. Uh, they have got started with actual and then they went out to six years. Income statement all the way down to free cash flow. So the total cash flow generated for to the firm, not including anything paid to the providers of capital, including both the debt holders and any dividends that are paid to stockholders. So this is the free cash flow that comes into the firm or is predicted to come into the firm each year. Uh, which is available to all the capital providers and has to be divided up uh, appropriately. So that's their first, first uh, estimate. You'll see that these growth rates for the first six years are mostly in free cash flow are mostly in the double digit range or close to it except for uh, the second year out. So the, the second thing they did was determine the cost of capital and Again, without going into detail here, they use the, uh, the, their, the various weights or equity and debt, the cost of each component, and then came up with the weighted average cost of, of capital of 7.4%. Third, we can do the math to determine the enterprise value or present value of the company today. And to do that, they did, did simply determine the present value in two steps. First they have six years of cash flows, uneven growth, so we can't go right to using the dividend discount model uh, or the formula for valuation here, but we can go back and discount each year's cash flow. So they started with the next year's cash flow projected at 908.2 if you discount 908.2 back at 7.4% for one year, you'll get uh, 845.8, which they showed as the first year's present value of that first year's cash flow. In other words, what that cash flow is worth today. They did the same thing for 2015 cash flow uh, of 904.8, discounted it by 7.4% for two years and the result you get is 784.8. Again, you can use the formula here, you can use a calculator, Excel spreadsheet, what have you, the result is, is the same. 904.8 discounted by 7.4% per year for two years. Present value of that is 784.8. They continued this out for the cash flows for full six years, and they ended up with these six present values of free cash flow. They added those together. Again, that gives us the present value of the next six years cash flow. They added these together to get 5103. But that only accounted for the cash flows for the first six years. It would be expected, or they would certainly hope, that Dollar General would continue for many, many more years beyond 2019. 
uh, never minding the fact that it's being acquired um, as, as this recording is made and won't exist as a standalone entity for much longer. But we know we've got this six present value of this year's six cash six cash flows. But what happens to the rest of the cash flows? And what they've done is project that the cash flows will grow at one at two point five percent forever in perpetuity. And once they've done that, we've got the ability to put this in our handy dandy formula, and that looks a lot, a lot like the formula that we used when we were using the dividend discount model, that is D1 over RS minus G, uh, except in this case we use free cash flow for the next year divided by the weighted average cost of capital minus the growth rate. What's the free cash flow for year one? It's the, or in this case year seven, it's the 1388 billion 389 that's projected times the growth rate of 2.5 percent so we have 1.025 so that projects the 2020 estimated cash flow will be a billion 424 million <clears throat> the so if we have next year's cash flow we have a weighted average cost of capital and we have a growth rate, permanent growth rate, <clears throat> we can use this equation, same thing here, and plug in the numbers and we'll get 29 billion and change. And that's the present value <clears throat> of all the remaining free cash flows to come to this company starting at the, after the end of 2019. Our numbers differ a little bit from their 29 uh, to 32. I think just due to the fact that they know the rounding uh, or have more digits here than we have um, when they did their calculation. So if we take 29 billion and we discount it back to today, the six years, we get 19 billion, almost 20 billion dollars. Now, why did we? discount that back. So all the cash flows from year 2020 and beyond discounted back are, are, at, at that point will be worth 29 billion dollars and change if we're standing at the end of 2019 looking forward. We couldn't sell that cash flow for that amount today because that's six years from now but in theory we could sell it or would be willing to buy it for almost twenty billion dollars today. So we take the present value of the first six cash flows it was calculated here 5103 we take the present value of the future cash flows plus the present value of all the cash flows after year six that is starting at the end of year seven and we add those two together and we get a total enterprise value of twenty four point two billion dollars again that's the total amount that in theory the firm could sell for um, and that money has to be divided between the equity and debt the debts on the balance sheet somewhere we'll see at two point three billion dollars so someone writes a check in theory again for twenty four billion dollars for the company Pay, we pay out the debt uh, and at the closing table and the equity holders, the shareholders get to split 21, almost 21.9 billion dollars. If we've got a total equity value of 21.9 billion dollars, 324 million shares outstanding, then each share is worth 68 dollars. So uh, again the present value of the enterprise we can then use to calculate our per share price.